right, welcome back, you guys, to Behind the Bikini. We are on episode 61. Noticeably absent is my partner in crime, Jordan. She is on vacation for the next two weeks. So I'm going to try and get a little bit of input from her going forward. But you're just going to have to deal with my face for the next two weeks till she gets back. So um, this kind of worked out okay because I wanted to go through some uh, more in-depth analysis of some of our Olympians. So I'm going to show you some posing routines uh, show you some things to point out, uh, things they did correctly, things they did incorrectly, uh, things like that. But before we do all that, you know the drill, like, comment, subscribe, hit the buttons, wherever they may be on your device. Um, and we are also going to talk about where we are as far as prep and things like that is concerned. Uh, as you know, we typically do give you the update here. So it's going to be me talking about my updates. I in off season, don't know exactly what her plans are at this point point but she is doing her reverse and everything out there in Greece so um, I'm sure when she gets back get a little bit more update on where she is with that but um, wanted to talk a little bit about how mine is going and what the plans are we've talked about this a little bit already but um, I am three weeks post show at this point uh, my week still the same as what it was the morning I woke up in Daytona so I'm like two pounds up from where I was in Georgia and I am actual stage weight right now for what I was in Daytona. So that couldn't be a better scenario. I am actually cutting back on like all of my stimulants and everything. I've, I've, I've pulled out all of my supplements just to kind of give my body a breather, um, and kind of reset and see what happens So the fact that I have not gained weight or dropped weight. And I'm kind of staying steady on that is a miracle in and of itself. <laughs> the only stimulant that I'm doing right now is coffee. And that is it. Um, everything else is gone. And again, I did that on purpose. Um, it does make me drag ass once I get towards the end of the day, but I, but I can deal with it. Um, I want to make it effective. So I have another six weeks till I'm going to be on stage again. So if I need to add that stuff in, I want it to actually work and not be like, I have to add copious amounts of caffeine in order to make myself, make myself achieve what I need to achieve. So, um, my caloric intake is up. I am up and over 2000 calories a day. My um, carb intake is up to 220 a day, uh, 220 grams. Um, so we have been slowly building, well, not slowly, we jumped up really fast after the show, and then we've been slowly building from there on my caloric intake as well. Um, cardio is down to 20 minutes a day, which means I have to do more walking to get my steps in. I still want to get my, my 10,000 steps average uh, a day on my steps, uh, which I've been doing. So right now, I feel like my body's in a very, very good place. I don't feel, like my body doesn't feel tired. Um, I don't feel... Uh, worn down. I don't feel any of those things. I feel like I could maintain this for a while. Um, don't know how long that's going to last, but I'm, I'm sure the boost in food and things like that has definitely helped in that scenario. Um, so training is the same. Strength is okay. It's not great. I'm adding more food in. Um, i trying to think if there's anything specific. Uh, I haven't gotten my cycle. I uh, don't expect to. Last month, it was very, very light this month. I just didn't get it. So I'm assuming once I get out of prep and, um, back into, you know, t tapering my activity down more and building up more calories, that's when it'll come back, uh, adding more body fat on right now. I'm not adding more body fat. I'm maintaining. Um, and the goal here is to, again, try to fill out my glutes a little bit. Now I've only got two months between the shows. So it's not like I'm going to grow a ton of muscle in two months. I know that I'm not, you know, I'm not, not delusional. However, there are certain things that I can control. Um, one of those is my mobility. And that is something I have stepped up a notch. I'm going to dry kneeling every day or every day, every week. Um, I'm going to massage therapy every week. Uh, I'm posing and posing conditioning more every single day. Um, and it's definitely working. I'm noticing things. One of the things that people don't realize with the with the whole body work aspect. So dry needling, what it does is when they get in there, they open up scar tissue and and you know break up some muscle adhesions, that kind of thing. When you do that, you start becoming more hyper aware of where you are tight. So one of the things I really noticed in the last week is how tight 
my glutes going into my adductors are specifically on my left hand side. Uh, when I saw my stage photos from Georgia, I realized that my glutes looked really flat on top. Uh, and that was because of the pull through my hamstrings. And I was overposing in my back pose because of that. I didn't even realize I was doing it, to be honest with you. But now, now that I'm feeling those areas again, I'm really realizing just how tight I actually was. And I, like, I, I was really overposing in my back pose. I didn't need to be doing all that. Uh, and I think it was just because I was kind of numb back there. Um, everything was so knotted and tied up that I didn't realize I was doing it. Um, I could see something was off, but I didn't know exactly what that was. Now that I feel it, I'm like, oh, that makes so much more sense, right? So um, I'm very, very hyper aware of that at this point. Uh, and I'm relaxing everything in the back pose, which is in turn making my glutes project out more, making my hamstrings project out more. Uh, I'm looking a whole lot fuller from the back. Um, you know, those kinds of things are really good. And the back pose itself is actually easier at this point. Now I am a little bit off balance. I've noticed that as well. My left foot has a tendency to go in front of my right. Um, so because of that, I have to overcorrect that a little. Um, and that all has to do with how I've been posing just in general. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm noticing all these little things. Now I bring all these things up because I never really noticed this before because I never really stayed in stage condition like this before. Um, you know, I've done years where I've done back to back shows a lot, but that was before bikini became what bikini is today. Um, and I never was really in the kind of condition that I am now. So I say all that again to say, I'm noticing these things now because I'm still stage lean. So there is definitely a benefit to staying in shape after your show. Uh, because again, I noticed all these things that were wrong when I was on stage. And now that I'm off stage, I'm able to fix those things in my shape that I'm in now. So I'm very, very glad that I decided to go ahead and do another show. Um, regardless of the outcome, regardless of the placing, regardless of any of those things, just the simple fact that I'm feeling my body better and I'm understanding the mechanisms, mechanisms and how everything is attaching better is just been, it's been very eye opening for me. Uh, it's not just for me. It's actually helping me with my clients too. It's helping me, you know, communicate to them what I see and what they probably feel or don't feel and what they need to do in order to fix those problems. So it's actually been very, very good, very um, hands-on educational for myself. And I'm loving what I'm seeing when I actually pose. Um, I've just got a lot more control over everything. I know what's doing what, where, and why. Um, and like I said, I, I want to do this again. Once I finish the December show, I mentioned this to my coach, Jamie. I said, listen, I want to stay in relatively good condition um, for at least, you know, at least a good month after the show so that I can continue to work on what I see on stage and then, you know, fixing it off stage. So this has been really good. I, I, I don't, I, I've never been in this kind of shape for this extended period of time. <laughs> So I'm happy about it. Um, you know, it's, uh, I, I do want to put more body fat on. I'm going to be honest with you. We've talked about this before. I feel more comfortable when I am a good, you know, 10, 15 pounds over my stage weight, like 10 to 12 pounds over my stage weight is perfect for me. That's where I like to live. If I go up and over that, I'm okay. But you know, that 10 to 10 to 12 is, is really, really good. So, um, I don't necessarily like my physique to live in at this stage right now. However, I feel good and I'm fine. And, um, and again, I'm fixing those problem areas. So all of those things are good. Um, it feels a little weird not doing as much cardio as I was, but I'm not complaining about it. It just gives me more time to do other stuff. So, um, happy about all that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else in particular going on. Not really. Um, sleep has been good. Digestion has been great. I've been figuring out how my body works with the food a whole lot better too. Um, yeah, I really don't have anything to complain about right now other than I just, uh, I just want to see myself do better. That's not really a complaint. I just want to see myself do better. And I'm putting that action every day to happen to make that happen. So, um, if you are thinking about, you know, doing a second show or, you know, you just get in stage shape. I really encourage you like take a day, take two days to eat what you want then get back on your plan. Um, do a really good reverse diet because these are the things that I never realized were going to be so valuable. Um, being able to see myself objectively and 
change things and fix things while I'm still in, in stage condition. Um, to be honest with you, I didn't think I was going to be able to hold this kind of conditioning as, as long as I have, I, I thought for sure that I would start putting on weight once the, once the calories went up and I haven't. So that tells me my body's in a really healthy space. It's in a really good place to be able to take in more food and it's really using the extra energy that I'm giving it. Um, so all good things, all good things. Um, yeah. And then we're just cruising along. And then when it comes to actually cutting down for the show again, I don't feel like I'm going to really need to do that because I'm pretty much right there anyway, I'm at my stage weight. So, um, I want to just keep pushing food as much as we can and keep trying to fill that, fill the muscle bellies out as much as we can, uh, and see where we land. Um, I am switching over to my left-hand side. I've mentioned this before. My left-hand side is better balanced for bikini. My right-hand side, the more that I look at it, I'm like, I just look kind of like figure light on my right-hand side. Like I'm all upper body, I'm all upper body. Um, I don't have a great flow on that side for bikini. Um, I think if I was figure, I think I could probably work with it a little bit more because I've got bigger delts and things like that on that side. But just the more that I look at it, the more I'm, I'm not this small girl anymore, it's as far as muscle size is concerned, I've always had almost this, this con, this thing in my head. I've been too small muscle wise. And I saw in Georgia, I'm not, and I'm definitely muscular. I'm definitely muscular enough for bikini. It's just creating that flow and that shape and that balance. Um, so I feel like my flow on my left-hand side has gotten a whole lot better. I've put on some good muscle. My hamstrings drops are better. My glutes better. Um, my shoulder is not as big on my left-hand side, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because in Georgia, I didn't even pump up my shoulders at all anyway. So I can just pump my left hand shoulder if I need to, you know? So, um, and it's easier for me to transition because my left glute is my transition glute side, all of the things. So, um, I am sticking with the left-hand side. I am conditioning that so that I can hold it. It's getting a lot easier to hold. Um, a lot of that has to do with the mobility work that I'm doing as well with the massage work and the dry needling on top of all the stretching and the foam rolling I already do at home. But, you know, adding on those, those other concepts are, are, are doing really, really good things. Now I'm also adding in cool toning. I think I mentioned this last week as well. Um, Cool toning activates the muscle. So the a uh, few days ago, what I did is I went to dry needling, which got deep into the muscle, broke up that those muscle adhesions. Then I went to cool toning, which hit a whole lot deeper once that was all loosened up. Then I went and trained. And doing all that in that sequential order, like my training was 10 times better than what it was, um, you know, even even the last time I trained glutes. So a lot of this is just how you're able to actually activate the muscle you're trying to train. So, uh, that was a really good combo. So I'm going to try and continue to do it in that kind of, um, succession. Uh, same thing with massage therapy. I'm going to, I've always done this where I do my massages first and then I train. I know some people say not to do that, but for me, it just opens me up and makes the training better. So it works for me. You know, this is one of those things where they, you know, though they say it's not the best thing to do, it works for me. So it works for me. If it works for you, it works for you, period. Right. So um, feeling really good, like I said, about how I'm actually hitting everything in training right now. So uh, that's kind of the prep update at the moment. Again, nothing really crazy to report, nothing going wrong, nothing um, out of the ordinary other than I'm, I'm shocked I'm able to stay in this good of condition. Um, but I'm happy about it. I could not be more happy about it. So that's the prep update. So our real topic for today is, um, you know, I was at the Olympia, um, as close to the center towards the judges as I could be to record for pre-judging. So I'm going to show you guys a few of the different, um, routines at pre-judging. And I want to point out a few things for each of them. I've pulled up um, figure, I've pulled up uh, wellness, and I've pulled up bikini. And there's certain things I want to talk about with each girl. Um, some of them I'm going to get very, very hyper critical on. So please understand that when I talk about these ladies, it's not me um, critiquing them as a person. It's me critiquing their form and what they're doing with their, with their posing 
um, and what could have been better for them potentially that day. Uh, and this doesn't necessarily mean this would be the same going forward for their shows either because their physiques could be different. But there's just some certain things that I saw after going back and reviewing um, what we what we had on stage that day and what could have been beneficial and what could have been detrimental. So um, there's a few things that, again, after reviewing game tape, I call this game tape. There's a few things that after reviewing game tape, I realized stuck out that I didn't realize when I was there in the moment. Right. So that's going to be our topic for today. Okay. So this first video that I want to show is, um, she plays third, I believe. Uh, I just love her posing. I wanted to really kind of just let her do her thing here for you guys. She tends to be a little bit more on like the sexy side when it comes to posing. And that's why I wanted to show this because we don't see this a whole lot specifically in figure. We don't see this kind of posing in figure as much. Um, that's just her personality. So, you know, it really does work for her. I don't think anybody else could pull it off the way that she does. I am a huge, huge fan of her physique. I feel like now with Sid Gillen retiring, she could be potentially getting into that top spot. And one thing I want to point out right here, you can actually see this in her, um, in her pose here. I actually think she's a little bit too hard. Uh, her conditioning. Look at the the rods that she's got going through her hamstrings. Now, conditioning in figure is more than bikini. It's more than wellness, all of that. But to me, this is just even just a little bit too much. So if she could figure out a way to, you know, bring this conditioning in a little, just a, just a touch fuller, just a touch softer, I think that would be very beneficial for her. But in general, I really just love her overall vibe of how she poses and everything on stage. Um, so really, I just wanted to showcase her because she is so different with her posing. So there's certain things that I think a lot of us think we have to do um, on stage. There's certain things that like the vibe division makes you do that kind of deal. That's just not the case. You want to be genuinely you. And I feel like Lola tends to be genuinely her on stage. So, you know, this was a good, this is a good example of that. And I just wanted to kind of give her a little bit of props here with that um, and show you guys her routine. So um, you can see she clearly does some out of the box poses, but she gets away with it because she just owns it. Right. So if you are going to do these kinds of things with your routine, you just have to realize that you have to go out there and own it as well. So um, yeah, again, I just wanted to showcase her a little bit because I'm just a big fan. So um, hopefully if you haven't seen her before, you now have, and you like her too. So there's Lola. The next one that we're going to bring up is the queen herself, Sid. So Sid Gillen, she is um, now eight time Miss Figure Olympia. She did um, win this year and she retired. Uh, now you can see she has a sexy flow to her whole routine as well, but it's just a little bit different, right? It's a little bit um, softer in her vibe, I suppose. Uh, but same kind of flow. Like she is, when it comes to posing, she's kind of a master. Uh, you can't get much better than this. She shows her physique flawlessly. That's ringing through. You, you really, really can't beat this flow. Right. So this is why I say when we're talking about, you know, Lola, even though Lola was not in second next to her, I do think that Lola could be the one coming up to kind of take this over. Now look at her back pose here. Hold on. Before we go through this, what, remember what I just said about Lola with her hands being a little bit too tight, like those rods. See what I'm talking about with Sid having a little of that conditioning. She's just a touch fuller through the back. This is perfect figure conditioning right here. It's very, very minimal, but it makes such a huge difference when you're on stage, right? So anyway, I wanted to showcase um, Sid. I don't think that we're going to see anyone pose like her like ever again. And the only one that's even close when it comes to confidence and overall poise and everything on stage, in my opinion, is Lola. Lola comes off a little bit more sexy. Um... Sid comes off a little bit more like, I don't know, confident diva, you know, 
it's two different vibes, right? Even though they both have kind of a sexy vibe, it's two different, very two very different vibes. You can feel it. You can feel the difference between Sid's um, Sid's posing and Lola's posing. So, I guess maybe the one critique that I would give Lola is to maybe smile a little bit more. If she was to smile, kind of that 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 cute little sexy smizing thing that Sid just did right there, I think that would take Lola's posing to the next level. Um, and then, she, then Lola just needs to kind of fill out a little bit on the lower half. This is, you know, again, this is her. So Sid's posing and Sid's conditioning is perfect for, for figure with Lola. I think she just needs to add a little bit more size to her legs because that's going to create more pop to her legs in general, which is going to allow her to look fuller and rounder, but have the same conditioning. I think that their conditioning level between Sid and Lola is very, very comparable, but Sid just has a little bit more muscle on her lower half, which makes her not look as hard as Lola is. So if I was Lola, I would just add a little bit more size to the lower body. Um, and I think that that would, that density, that pop, that fullness, that would get her there. So congratulations to Sydney. Um, I thought she was going to go for 10. She, she ended it with eight. Who knows? Maybe she'll be back. But, you know, I think she's in, she's in her early 30s. I think she's like 32 or something like that at this point. So it makes sense to retire now. I think she a year or so. So she probably wants to, you know, do some family stuff, maybe try to have kids, you know, who knows. Um, but congratulations to her. I don't think there's ever going to be anyone that does it as well as she does. Okay, so let's move over to wellness. Um, I wanted to highlight uh, Eduarda here for wellness. So Eduarda was kind of the rookie that came out and killed it. Um, beautiful look. Everybody was, was her to Francielli. Um, we're going to look at Francielli after her so you can see the difference in their density. Now, one thing I will say that Eduarda did here that was actually better than Francielli was her overall presence. That smile that she's just excited to be on that stage. You can tell she's super happy to be here. But you can also see her density is not that thick in her lower half. Okay, so really pay attention to the fact that she's not walks. That's the lack of density there. Beautiful shape. Again, she just needs that fullness and that roundness. And like people were... Um, kind of giving her some flack for copying Francielli's routine, copying what Francielli was doing. And I understand that too, because when you put, you know, the three-time Olympia champ next to the rookie and the rookie is doing your routine, it's really noticeable <laughs> the differences. Um, so the differences between Eduarda and Francielli, you're going to see them really, really clearly when it comes to shape, the muscle, the conditioning, all of that, because Eduarda just not there yet. But it also, I think, worked in Eduarda's favor to the extent of the confidence factor because Eduarda had that confidence. She had that wow factor. She had that bright, beautiful smile. You know, she just, you, you could tell she was just excited to be on that stage and be in the position that she was in. Some people coming in with the amount of pressure that she had in this particular show would have maybe crumbled underneath that pressure. She did not. She performed very, very well. So I see Eduarda in the next few years coming up and taking the title. I really do. Um, maybe not next year, but three, four years from now, 100%. 100% could take that title. So let's take a look at Francielli next. Um, yep. Okay. So now we got Francielli. All right. So Francielli is the queen. She has won the Olympia you know, three times, she lost it this year to Issa. Now, just watching Francielli go through this routine. I thought she did a fantastic job when, she, when I was there in person. But now that I watch it back, this is what I was talking about, about seeing things, you know, returning back, right? Watching it back now, I just, it's just missing that extra pop, that extra power from her personality. I don't know what it is exactly, but she's not 100% there confidence-wise. Now, you can see real clearly, we were just talking about the glute density with Eduarda. I mean, Francioli blows Eduarda away when it comes to that. But just the overall vibe from the face, Eduarda blew Francioli away. 
So I think this actually worked in Eduardo's favor in this in this particular regard. Physique wise, there's like there's like no comparison, right? Francielli beats Eduardo by a mile when it comes to the physique. But when it comes to the confidence factor, when it comes to just the overall vibe, I feel like Eduardo beat Francielli. I mean, comment, let me know what you think. While this is good from Francielli, I don't think it's great. I don't think it's her normal like wow factor, right? She's got the wow factor because she's Francielli and she's won this three times. But it's almost like she knew there was something missing. I don't, I don't know what that is exactly. I don't know what that is exactly because her physique looks phenomenal. When I was listening to um, Tyler's feedback, you know, he gave Francielli the front pose, gave her quarter turns, gave Issa one of the quarter turns, gave Issa the back pose. So maybe Francielli just knew she wasn't quite there at 100% on all of her poses. Maybe she knew it and that translated over to her presence on stage. We don't know. Um, but like I said, comment. Let me know what you think. Um, I do think that Francielli beat Eduardo when it comes to the overall uh, physique. But when it comes to confidence level, I think Eduardo blew it, blew it away. I do. I think she blew it away. Okay, so let's move over into bikini. Speaking of confidence levels, uh, we got another rookie I wanted to highlight today. And that is Maria. Maria Acosta. So Maria was, if she wasn't the first one on stage, she was one of the first ones because her last name's Acosta. So she was one of the first ones on stage. I wanted to showcase her because she, everybody that I've heard talk about their analysis of the Olympia was, was just like, wow, Maria was just on. She just blew it away from the second she walked out on stage. And I agree with that. From the second she walked out on stage, she just blew it away. She's so well balanced. Her physique was popping everywhere. Her conditioning was right on, all of that. But also just look at her presence. She's just got such an easy flow to her routine, easy flow to her presence. She's not overdoing anything. Nothing about her posing is unique. There's nothing here that's crazy. There's nothing that's out of the box. There's nothing that's like, oh, wow, we've never seen that before. She's just doing your standard front pose, back pose, walk to the back. You know, there's nothing, again, there's nothing like crazy about this. You don't need anything crazy about your routine for you to stand out. If you've got a banging physique and your presence is on point, you are going to stand out. Again, everybody, everybody said that she was the standout from this year, right? And I would agree. You know, she's brand new to the Olympia stage and she just kicked killed it. Like it's not, there's nothing. And again, there's nothing that I can point to and say, this is what did it. It was just the overall look. It was the overall vibe, the overall confidence, and nothing was over the top. She was just, she was just like this all the way through. She showcased her best as she got off the stage. Right. And that did great for her. And I actually could have seen her placing a little bit higher than she did. So I wanted to give her some props in that, because, again, I don't think she did anything crazy to try to stand out other than just be herself. So remember that when you're prepping for your own shows and you're trying to go through your posing and, and all this kind of stuff. I get that all the time with posing clients. I think they have to do something crazy and, and unique and different in order to stand out. You don't. You just got to bring you and you got to be confident in what you're bringing. And that's what Maria did did here and that's why she got herself into the that in her first olympia now on the other side of that coin i also want to show um ivana so this is evie ivana so let's take a look at her very first pose okay right here i'm gonna stop it right there okay now i said this in my in my predictions i hope she doesn't do anything crazy with her posing that shows anything weak, weak with her. This is a weakness right here. It just makes her look straight up and down. She does this pose a lot. I'm not a fan of it. Um, not sure exactly why she does it. And she opens her routine with it. So immediately, as soon as she walks out on stage and hits that first pose, we see her weakness, right? So I really wish this, I think this is kind of a, the, the influence from like the European style posing and things like that. I wish she would just conform and do like what Maria did. If she did just a basic routine like what Maria did and showed her best assets, uh, I really think that would have shown her in a better light. Now, not like Evie did bad or anything like that. And really, it was more so her conditioning that was the issue with the show than anything else. But why show something that's not as strong as the rest as your very, 
very first pose. There's, there's no reason to do that, right? Um, th there's just there's just not. And I, again, I'm not a huge fan of the pink on her. I just don't think it pops as much as like the blue or the red did. Um, just in general, I think she missed on some of these presentation details. And we're talking about the top, you know, 50 to 60 girls in the world. Every little detail like that matters, right? Um, I do like her hair and makeup. I would just like to see her, you know, conform a little bit more to typical posing and go back to the colors that win for her, which are the blues and the reds, right? So again, you don't need to do anything crazy. And sometimes when you do this, when you do something like that, when you hit those straight on poses, she does not have one of those waistlines that goes really tight in like this. I mean, she, again, it's not, it's not bad. Don't get me wrong. She, it's not bad. Like I said, I'm going to get critical about these girls. This is very critical. Um, but it's just not the best. It's not her best feature. So why start and finish on something that is not your best look? She started and finished on that same pose with her body straight on to the judges. It's very, very rare that we will see girls that go straight on to the judges and that's why. Now, again, I'm not saying that she's she's bad like that, but she's not her best. That is not her best pose. So why hit this as your, as your last pose as you're walking off? Why hit it as your first pose? Right? Here she goes again. Let's watch it again. See what I mean? Right there. I don't know. I don't know. Just get rid of it. Really easy. Get rid of it. Go back to being basic. Be a basic bitch. And you'll be, and you'll be fine. Um, next thing that I wanted to bring up was Angelica. Now, Angelica did end up in the top 10. Everybody loves Angelica, but I wanted to point out a few things. You can see it right here in this front pose. as She steps into it. See how she's got that little ab extension right here. So here's the thing, ladies, as we get older, I'm part of this too. I'm 43. So I'm not just talking out my ass here. It's the, it's the truth. As we get older, things change. We get leaner, we get harder, we get grainier. So uh, Angelica's also had two children, which makes it harder for the core control. Uh, I believe what this is, is a combination of her probably trying to fill out because she's very, very hard. You can see that she's hard from the front. So she's probably trying to fill out for the show. That can cause some lower ab extension. Hi, happened to me. I know exactly what that's all about. Um, and also just like the, the lack of, of muscle tightness there just from having the kids too. So in a normal situation, if she was like in a master's show or something like that, this wouldn't be a problem. But here in the open, like we've just been talking about, every little detail counts. So right there, she's very, very hard from the front. I think she was trying to soften up a little bit, right? So let's watch her get to the back here. Now we see the, the lower ab extension quite a bit. Um, when she gets into the back pose here, give her a second. See how she shakes and jiggles, right? So she's got to fix that transition, make it simpler so that she doesn't drop her glutes as she's stepping into it because she did drop. If she could have kept her glutes up, I don't think we would have seen as much of a jiggle there. Now, also, just looking at her glutes here, you can see she's just not as dense as the other girls. She's in shape. Don't get me wrong. She just doesn't have the muscle density that the other girls have. And that, again, is like the first thing that goes as we start getting older just part of it. Now also look at the, um, the difference between her upper body and her lower body. She's got her, her elbows pointed out quite a bit, which is making her look thin through her arms. Um, so that's a no as well. I would probably bring the arms down a little bit, make the arm, make the arms a little bit straighter because that would actually make her look a little thicker through the arms and through the delts. She's actually making herself look skinnier by the position that she's in. Um, and then let's watch her next move. So again, she's shaking and jiggling as she steps. She's got to be really careful about that. And then she walks, which was not a good idea for a few reasons. Okay. So a, she's shaking and jiggling, just like we talked about, but also watch her upper glute as she walks, as she walks the upper glute, you can see it striate at the top. I have the same issue. That's not being too lean. You guys, that is muscle impingement telling you it's not being too lean. It's being pulled from somewhere else. This is why I'm going and getting muscle, you know, muscle, uh, massage therapy and getting dry needling done all the time to get rid of those. It's muscle pull from elsewhere. Okay. So she needs to get some body work done to help to loosen that up. But in general, again, she's, she's got great proportion, 
but she needs more size. She needs more size in her upper body, her shoulders, more in her legs, more in her glutes. She needs more muscle if she wants to be competitive in the open. This particular package will win a master's show every day of the week. Every day of the week, it'll win a master's show. But in the open, she's going to need more muscle density. She's going to need more size, period, all the way around. Okay. Um, there's just some things that she could do her posing that will help to minimize like the jiggle and things like that. But at the end of the day, she's still going to be on the smaller side. You know, even where this, this video starts with her kind of walking into her front pose, you can see the lower ab distension, right? So this is, this is a product of being a mom, you know, being in your forties. There's nothing wrong with that. You're just not 20 years old anymore. That's all. That's all. So if I was Angelica, I would take a good off season um, or I would switch over to masters. I've said this before too. She could win a master's show tomorrow, right? Win a master's show, go to the master's Olympia, get a master's Olympia title, right? Get, be the first person to ever have an actual Olympia title and a master's Olympia title. She could do both. Easily could do both. That would be what I would do. If I was her just saying, just saying. Um, next let's go to Issa. So Issa was probably one of the shocks of the show as far as how she looked from behind. But I also want to point out a couple things here too. Now watch her as she walk, goes into this front pose and what we were just talking about with Angelica. Watch her waistline, okay? Watch her lower abs. She has lower ab distension right there. I have never, I don't know if I've ever seen um, Issa have lower ab distension. Now I could just be misremembering, but I don't know if I've ever seen her have lower ab distension. She has a layer of like inflammation underneath her belly button and you'll see it through this whole, this whole posing routine. Um, she let, you can see it here. You can see that lower ab distension. I think this is hormonal. Um, she almost looks too skinny through her rib cage there and you've got water on her lower back too. So look at the, look at her lower back and look at these little wrinkles right here. This is all inflammation, you guys. So I don't know what she did. And I know that um, her coach put a put a uh, video out saying that he doesn't know what happened either. But when I'm looking at this, this looks hormonal to me. Like something went wrong. Um, again, she's very shaky in her in her glutes when she, she steps. Watch the watch the jiggle as she steps into her glute into her glutes, her back pose, right? No hamstring tie-ins. This is all hormonal. She had some tanning issues too, some splotchy tanning in the back, that kind of thing as well. Um, every time she takes a, sh takes a step, we don't have that, that density. I would not have done the walk to the back at all here. I would have just hit the back pose and turned around. You've only got 45 seconds anyway. Again, why do something that's going to make you look weak? Just hit the back pose, turn back around. Don't do this walk because this walk really emphasizes the fact that she is not tight enough in the glutes. And we don't know why she's not tight enough, but it looks like she's lost density. Um, she, she's looking inflamed, all of those kinds of things. And every time that she moves, you see that. Eyes go right to it. Again, if she was by herself, maybe not a big deal. But she's up against 50, 60 other amazing women from around the world. And every little bit counts. Okay. I, again, don't know exactly what happened here. But all the things that I'm seeing through her posing routine makes me think it was a hormonal thing, right? So just watch this again. Watch her lower abs. Watch the lower back. Watch the glutes when she goes through this. It's just not the normal crisp. I don't. I always say with with Isa, sometimes she's too conditioned, and this is the complete opposite of that. This was the complete opposite of that. So. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what happened. I don't know what went wrong. Um, but if I was her, I'd be getting some some lab work done, kind of see where everything is sitting. Hopefully, get some time off. A really, I've said this for years now. She just needs to take a really long. When I say really long, I mean like a couple of years, not dieting and getting off stage. I don't know if she's ever taken a full year off ever. Girl's still young, man. You got time. Take the time. Take the time, get off stage and get your body right. Come back fresh and renewed and ready to go, right? Um, okay, so the next one we're going to bring up is our top two. Okay, let's talk about Ashley. So I was super impressed with Ashley when she first walked out on stage um, for front, the first looks when they did the front back front. Um, I actually have, I think that the 
shorter time routines uh, for this particular show work in her favor. Um, I thought going into finals, she was, you know, I knew, I knew the judges had her in second. I personally had her in first. Um, but now, now that I've gone back and looked at all the footage, I completely understand why she was in second place and why Laura Lee beat her. There's a lot of reasons here, guys, and I, I, I see it now. So um, I did watch Tyler's recap, and he talked about how she went overboard with filling out, and I agree. Um, he talked about her vacuuming too much in the front pose, and I agree. Um, I see all of that here in this video. There's a few things I'm going to point out as well. Well, I think her posing has come a long way. I think she's she's a lot smoother with her posing. But one thing I think she did uh, incorrectly from the jump is, is you're going to see this when she walks forward. So watch this when she walks forward. Her suit bottoms are way too low. Look at that. Way too low on that B. Way, way, way too low on that B. Um, it's almost scary low. Like, I think she's doing it on purpose, trying to make her waistline be in a little bit more. Okay, I get that. But this is too low. This is too low. Also, hair already in the middle of her chest here. She's already got hair covering her, and then she doesn't move it when she gets into her front pose. So when she gets into her front pose, that hair is completely obstructing that back shoulder and her chest and everything. It just looks sloppy and messy. One thing I do like about her front pose is her shoulders. For me, that was a big, big selling point when I saw her step on stage, because I don't remember her shoulders ever looking that full. Uh, but the rest of her was just as full too. So, you know, I understand why they say that she went overboard with the fullness. I get that. Um, so, but I, I, I went directly to her shoulders with that. But you can see she still has a little bit of that ab distension. She is vacuuming in this particular pose here. I've never been a fan of this. Um, she's like, it's almost like she's squatting into it. Not sure exactly why she does it like this. Um, a slight bend in the knee is fine. Actually sitting into this knee just looks like she's squatting. I would love to see her push her glutes up more and straighten that knee out. She doesn't need to lock it, but she needs to straighten it out. This just looks awkward to me. Uncomfortable is what it looks like, right? Um, so when she steps into her back pose here, she pushes too hard. Um, she's really actually flattening her glutes out quite a bit here. And I'm thinking she may have done this to overcompensate for the fact she she wasn't as tight as she typically is her upper body is pitched forward you can see that here um again i'm not a fan of these suit bottom cuts i think it just doesn't flatter anybody um but she's she's just put pushing way too hard here um and right here see the squish in her glutes right here see that little squish that squish that little, little line she went overboard with the fullness so tyler's right I personally, when I was watching this, didn't see it. Now, as I'm looking back at the video, completely see it. 100% see it and see why why she went overboard with the fullness. I agree. Um, so, I understand it. I understand why she came in second here. And a lot of these little things, like, they can be fixed through her posing. Um, and just overall presentation, overall look, right? Uh I think she did herself a disservice with her posing as far as the back pose because, you know, her front pose, that's always the critique with the vacuum and all of that, a little abstention. I've said that a thousand times when I've been critiquing her at shows. The back pose, I just feel like, I think she, I feel like she overcompensated on her back pose thinking that she was too full and thinking if she pushed a little harder, that would make her hamstrings come out a little bit more. I've done that. So I understand that mentality. <laughs> But it actually flattened her out, it actually did her a disservice from the back. So um, I'm, I know she's planning on competing again, so I'm sure she'll fix a lot of these things. Uh, but still, I mean, second in the world is nothing to sneeze at, so don't get me wrong. But I'm sure there's that she's looking at this saying, okay, I, I could have done this better, I could have done that better. And I do, again, I do think that the time limits of 45 seconds for these girls at the Olympia actually really benefits her quite a bit, because that's what she does anyway, regardless. And last but not least, we're going to bring out Laura Lee. So I have been vocal of saying this was Laura Lee's best package. Um, I think she deserved to win that day. Uh, I just liked her Arnold look better. To me, this front pose is just a little bit not finished, if that makes sense. Uh, this doesn't look like she completely, right? She's not opening up really through her upper body, that kind of thing. And it just looks a little bit like she's just standing there. Which, okay, there's there's an argument to be made for that being being 
the right thing to do. Um, but I just like to see her open this up a little bit more with this, with this pose. Uh, but her overall presence is you, you can't, you can't deny that. Um, now when she gets into this next pose, again, it looks like she's barely even posing, which is good that her shape looks that good without, without posing it much. Now look at her back pose. One thing I want you to notice here, she's not pushing hard at all. She's not pushing hard at all with this back pose because she knows that if she does that, her glutes are going to be way too overpowering. They're already the focal point here of this pose for her. They always are. She's got phenomenal glutes. Don't get me wrong. But she knows that if she pushes too hard here and she overposes this too much, they are going to become too much for the division, right? The way she posed here, she's underposing. Don't ever pose like Laura Lee, you guys, because you don't have Laura Lee glutes, right? This is a great example of somebody not to copy when you're posing because you don't look like her. Nobody looks like Laura Lee. She looks like herself, right? Um, so I want you to watch when she starts walking. This was a critique that, that Tyler gave her. Uh, as far as her walk to the back and her upper glutes dropping off, which I agree with. Now, the other thing I'm not a huge fan of with this walk is she's almost dragging her toes on the floor. Um, I feel like she's doing that to try to give attitude, but in the process of doing that, that's why everything back here is dropping. If she was to push up more here as she walked, I don't think she would have that problem of her upper glutes kind of disappearing as she walked. But you can see right here in mid-transition with this walk, her glutes, her upper glutes are, are, are dropped. Right. So instead of let's let's take a look from her back pose, instead of dragging her feet on the ground, let's watch her walk. See, they're nice and full here. Not a problem, but she's dragging her feet on the ground. And because she's doing that, you know, it's it's she's dipping down. Now, Laura Lee is one of the few people that I think she can pull off. <laughs> Look at, she did the pose that I did in my last show. <laughs> I told Jamie when I was practicing it, I said, this is going to be very Laura Lee-esque. And it is. Um, not going to lie. It's Laura Lee-esque. Um, but I think she's one of the few people that she could actually stand straight up to the judges like Evie was um, and get away with it. Uh, I don't think she did during the routine, but she could. Maybe she did. It was a little bit of a transition. But see, she didn't even hold it. She just went through it. Yeah, she still, she still poses on a diagonal, even though she could come straight on. You know, we talked about that with, with Evie. Like, watch her, her the mid, uh, mid part of her waist when she turns around. She, she V's in like this with her waistline. Um, so she could get away with coming straight on to the judges if she wanted to do it. I think she's done it in other shows. And she kind of has it right there. But again, she didn't hold it. She just moved through it, even though she could have if she wanted to, right? So this is the difference between Laura Lee winning the Miss Olympia and somebody like Evie placing outside the top 15 because she just didn't have the genetics to pull off that particular shape and that particular look and that particular pose. Laura Lee actually has the shape and genetics to do it, and she still didn't do it, right? She chose to pick the poses that were best for her shape, best for her frame. Now, one thing I think that is really cool that she did and this is something that I tell every one of my clients to do, and that is to pose on both sides. She used both sides. Watch. Watch her use both sides of her posing. There's her main pose. There we go. So she kind of, she hit it at another point. Maybe it was her, oh yeah, this is this is where it was. This is when she, when she came forward. So she's actually hitting her weak side right here. This is her weak side. That's not her main pose. And then she comes up when she gets to the front and she hits her main pose. So I'll be honest, I'm not, I'm, I'm not hating her weak side pose, the one that she hit at the top of the key. I think that actually her waistline looks a little bit better in that side. She might want to try to work with that a little bit more. Um, put that one up on stage as her main side sometime. So, you know, at the end of the day, when I was watching this live, I was comparing Laura Lee to, you know, past Laura Lee's I've seen like at the Arnold. I think her Arnold package was my favorite. Um, and I don't think that she beat her Arnold look. I think her Arnold look still is better, but it's pretty clear here, regardless that she did win the show this day. Now, if, you know, Jennifer Dory was up there or Maureen was up there, I don't know. It might, it might've been, we might be singing a different tune right now. Right. But you know, that that's, that's how.
how the cookie crumbles sometimes. And I'm glad that Lurley finally got her championship because I've been predicting her to win this thing since she first got on the stage as a rookie. So <laughs> I, I was saying, I'm like, the reason why she won this year is because I did not predict her to win. That's why she won. So um, I, I'm happy for her. And so hopefully next year we'll have, maybe we'll have Maureen back. Maybe we'll have Jennifer back. I want to see the whole, I want to see all of them up there. I want to see all of them up there and I want to see all of them at their absolute best competing against each other. And I think that would be a phenomenal Olympia. Um, and then just let the best woman win, right? So I think they all have their, their strengths and their weaknesses in their own right. And I just want to see all of them at their very best. I want to see Issa get better and, and come back at her best. I want to see Ashley at her best. I want to see Maureen heal up and come back at her best. I want to see Jennifer Dory come back at her best. I want to see them all at their best up against each other. I think it'd be phenomenal. So, um, interrupting our scheduled programming for just a moment here to introduce our brand new YouTube channel partners, Liquid Sunrays. If you know anything about me, you know that I've used Liquid Sunrays, nothing but Liquid Sunrays, my entire competitive career for 15 years. And we are so excited to welcome them as an official partner of our YouTube channel now. So if you've never checked them out, scan the QR code right here, or I will also put a link for their site down into the description box below. Get over there, check out their products and services, book them for your show, get their DIY stuff, get their competition skin prep. You'll want to use a skin prep even when you're not in competition prep. It's that fantastic. And let them know that I sent you. You can use code QTIES15. And again, thank you so much for your belief in us and in our products and in our services. We believe in you just as much. So thank you so much for your support, Liquid Sunrays. And again, scan this QR code right here. Go check them out. Let Mama Rays know that Mama Cutie sent you. Um, that is it for today. So, um, I know this was a little bit different for our behind the bikini today, but I did want to go into this and I felt like it, it fit for me to do this now because again, Jordan is not here. She's on vacation, but she was on stage competing with these girls too. So I know she never likes to really cr critique shows because it can look like being a bad sport, all that kind of stuff. I totally understand that aspect. So I think that this came in at a good time. Um, so as we wrap this up for today, uh, go ahead and comment for me. Tell me what you think. Tell me what your thoughts were about the Olympia, about the things that I've just talked about with all these girls and they're posing. Do you see what I'm talking about? And does this actually help you when you're thinking about your own posing? Again, going back to just because Laura Lee did it doesn't mean you should because you don't look like her. In fact, nobody looks like Laura Lee. Laura Lee just looks like Laura Lee and that's it. That's her. So, you know, I really highly encourage you to make sure that when you are doing your preps uh, with your coach, when you're getting your posing sessions done, that you're doing it to best accentuate you and you're not doing it because somebody else did it. Does that make sense? Right? All right. So that is it for today. That is our behind the bikini for today. Um, I hope you guys have had a fantastic week so far. Um, let y'all go. This is uh, behind the bikini for myself and my co-host who is having a fantastic time in Greece right now, Jordan. Um, this is episode 61 signing out. Like, comment, subscribe. Bye guys.